Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and it's about that time of year again where Epic Games releases a new version of Unreal Engine. In this case, they are releasing Unreal Engine 5.1, and they have made the roadmap for 5.1 public so you guys can see all of the changes that are coming in the new update of Unreal Engine 5. So there are a lot of different improvements in Lumen, Nanite, and, and many other systems within Unreal Engine 5. I'll leave a link to this public roadmap in the description below if you guys are interested in reading through it. Uh, there are some new features that come included in this version which I'll get into here in a second but right at the bat we have some Lumen improvements so they're working on optimizing it for I guess 60 FPS on consoles in my opinion Lumen just takes a lot of performance so it's always good that they're working on improving the optimization because that you know real-time lighting is always going to be performance intensive it has many uh, improvements stability quality bug fixes that it takes it's always going to be good news. Uh, Nanite, primary focus of Nanite in 5.1 is the addition of programmable rasterization framework, opening the door to features such as mass materials, two-sided foliage, pixel depth offset, and world position offset. So I guess what they are meaning to add support for is for mainly foliage because, you know, trees, grass, all that sort of stuff right now is basically a two-sided material. Uh, so if they add support for that, that's going to be huge in terms of like performance. Generally speaking, you know, all the grass, trees and all that stuff always have issues with LEDs popping in and out when you're loading it in, eat up a lot of performance. And if you can just, you know, hit a checkbox and enable Nanite on it, it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of performance. Uh, there are a couple of other things in here. I'm not gonna go over every single update here, now in terms of world building we have support for large world coordinates i thought this is already included in ue5 but what i want to know is if they are working on fixing landscapes in this particular version uh, because it seems that you can only create a certain limited landscape size so h lot improvements this is like the procedural mesh that you can generate so you can see like all of the city buildings off in the distance this is all LOD. Continue to span HLOD support for world partition and other world building with the additional functionality and extended support. So HLOD for water, we now supports HLOD for water rendering and streaming, enabling better performance. We've added a new ability to view generated HLOD directly in the editor, and you can also use a custom HLOD. Uh, now, there were a lot of different additions to characters and animations in this particular update. So, we have procedural control recreation. It looks like you have new events on the graph construction event. So, this enables you to generate rig hierarchies via a graph. So, this will happen before the event begin play. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, I guess you can add custom events now to your control rig graph. So, it looks like they're just adding overall more nodes and features to the control rig graph. So, it has sort of the same sort of features of Blueprint. Cool thing here is character deformation improvements. So I guess they're adding deformers enable users to create complex shapes and behaviors on skeletal mesh on skeletal meshes such as muscles, exaggerated cartoon characters, and skin sliding. So I guess it's been in previous versions. It's just moved to beta, so they're just working on improving that. And it looks like they're using control rig here. So this would be like if you're using some sort of deformer with control rig to create any sort of result. I think they use this on the Matrix Awakens cars to simulate like the destruction and all that stuff. So more improvements in audio. I'm not really a big audio guy, but if you want to look through those, you can some pipeline improvements so these are the different integrations you know 3ds max sketchup cad chaos physics um, they worked on i guess updating the documentation which is much needed because last time they wrote the documentation on this it was probably back in 2014 or 2015 under the physics uh, system so now we're updated to the chaos physics system so they went ahead and updated all the documentation on that and it looks like they've made some improvements uh, on cloth simulation they have a bunch of different virtual production cinematic and virtual production updates so if you want to go ahead and read up about these, you can check these ones out. Uh, we have some overall blueprint improvements. So yes, blueprint namespaces are being developed to aid the organization and categorization of blueprints, similarly to how namespaces function in other programming languages. 
Blueprint Header Preview. This tool helps and guides users that desire nativizing their Blueprint for performance reasons. So I wonder if this is like going to tell us, you know, hey, this particular node of Blueprint or this connection of nodes would work better in C++ for performance reasons or whatnot. Production ready state tree. Uh, I always wanted to kind of mess around with this. Uh, this is like the new AI system, mainly for like the mass AI system. Uh, basically, you can see here like the different states or the different like logic that the AI follows. We have reacting to a hit, idle, wander, all that sort of stuff. Honestly, I've never messed around with it, but I feel like it'd be pretty to play around with. Uh, then general editor slash UI updates. Like this one, for example, they've made the world outliner kind of collapse. So as you scroll down, all the folders will collapse rather than having to scroll through all of the content. You can see the scroll wheel there gets smaller and smaller as you scroll down. Some content browser searching and filtering improvements. So the content browsers now has the ability to save a search as a filter. So if you want to add a custom filter, you could type in, you know, whatever text is context sensitive to your game or project, you can add that word or text as a custom filter to your content browser. But yeah, those are just some of the different updates that are coming in 5.1. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Personally, whenever I see one of these updates or roadmaps, I'm always looking towards like the, the support for landscapes and all that stuff. I'm always wondering if they're doing any updates to the landscape system and all that stuff. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Are you excited for some of these changes or what changes you guys are excited for or if you guys are looking forward to a particular feature? Let me know you guys thoughts and as always I'll see you guys in the next one.